right, today we are beginning our trig graphing. So now we're going to be graphing these different values. Okay, today we're going to approach it slowly. We're going to graph only the sine and cosine with amplitude and period change. So we will be learning a lot of new things. You better pay, clo pay close attention. This is just a little meme I created for pre Whoops. thought you guys would enjoy it. This class, I thought you guys All right. Now, the vocabulary is very important. You have to understand what I'm talking about when I say different things. So, first of all, amplitude. Amplitude is thinking about sound. Amplitude is your amplifier. It makes the sound either get large or get small, high or low. Well, that's what you get in your trig function, sines and cosines. Your amplitude increases the y value or decreases them depending on whether it's greater than 1. Okay, next we have periodic functions. You know and use a lot of periodic functions. Months of the year come in periodic functions. Every 12 years, you're back to it being April. Every 12 years, sorry. Every 12 months, you're back to it being April. The whole year cycles January through December all the time. Your days are periodic. They happen for 24 hours. You get a certain number of hours of sunlight, a certain number of hours of dark. You get hours, 24 hours with 60 minutes. And all of these are periodic things. So periodic means just that it repeats itself. So a periodic function has a repeating pattern. Cycle is the shortest portion of that function. And a pe the period is the horizontal length. So your amplitude is your vertical size, and your period is your horizontal size. Frequency is merely how often it repeats itself within that standard circle. Okay, let's take a look at what this all means. All right, so first what we're doing, I want you to see this. We're going to break this down into three parts for this particular lecture. We're going to graph the basic sine and cosine function, and then we're going to see it with a change in amplitude, and then a change of period, and then finally, we'll put it all together. So we're going to have basically, well, excuse me, four different sections. All right. Now, unfortunately, this is supposed to have a, um, it's animated on my slides, but it can't do animation in um, explain everything. That's the app I'm using. So I will have to do some of your animation for you. All right, for our cosine, remember on the unit circle, we had cosine, sine. Cosine was your x value, sine was your y value. Well, it's the same thing here. If you look at this green circle, the x values, notice that they are, the x value is actually falling, right? It's going down. The x value is actually going downward. So, notice it falls, okay, and it's still going down all the way to 180, it keeps going down. Now, it transitions, and notice now it's going in the positive direction, so now it's going up. This is actually going up, it doesn't always look that way, and here it is going up. So you can see a correlation to the x values within a unit circle. Now, for sine, it's the y values. Okay, whoops, well, anyway. Okay, so as I go up, notice it's the y value is going up. So here we go, y value goes up. And now it's coming down. And it's continuing down. And now it's back up. That's where you're getting these different functions. Okay. Now here's a picture, and it's showing you both a sine and a cosine. You're getting a little bit more than one period, one repeat of the pattern. 
Okay, domain and range. Your domain, the x values, are all real. If you notice, it's going to go eventually to all values because this pattern simply repeats itself into infinity both directions. So your domain is all real. But your range, on the other hand, it changes. Your range only goes from positive 1 to negative 1 for both of these functions. All right? Unless you multiply it by something, it's only going to go from 1 to negative 1. Now, your amplitude is half right here. Amplitude is half the change in y. It's with the triangle with y and delta y. Okay, notice this is my change in y right here. So my amplitude in this case is 1. So I'm changing 2. I'm going from minus 1 up to 1. It's 2 units. My amplitude is only half of that. So my amplitude is just 1. This, again, is true for your cosine. So you're only going one unit up and one unit down. Alrighty then, your period is the whoops, just your highlighting. Your period is ha is the length of each cycle. And unless I do something to the period, the basic period is one full circle or two pi or three sixty. Normally we graph in radians. So notice that one cycle from there to there is 2 pi. Okay, so I'm going from where I'm coming off the y, the x-axis, up, back down, and I'm back to the same directionality on the x-axis. For my cosine, it starts from the maximum, arcs down, and then back up to the maximum. That is my standard period. All right, your x-intercepts. These are just all your intercepts. X-intercepts are these values for sine, for cosine. We're going to go over this when we graph it, so we'll go into more detail with these. Your y-intercept, it just kind of sets you up. You notice that your sine is at 0, which is right there, and your cosine is up here at 1. All right, moving to the next slide. Okay, unfortunately I don't have my, the graph is here. I'd rather it be a plain blank, and I think I've managed to take it off on your graph, so I'm going to walk you through this. Okay, so, if you're given this plain, if you're drawing your own graph, actually that's what I'll do, that sounds even better. So I'm drawing my own graph. I get some graph paper, and I mark out 1, 2, 3, 4. I then mark the furthest out, whatever my period is at. My period is 2 pi. I do half of that. Then I do half of that one. Then for my last one, I multiply the very first tick mark, the pi over 2, times 3. And this will work no matter what your period is. All right, now, generally speaking, later on you'll see we're going to draw out two full periods. So I would also do four tick marks the other direction. Two pi, and a negative. Pi, again negative. Pi over two, negative. And three pi over two, negative. I mark my one and my negative one. All right, I've marked all my tick marks. That's my first step. All right, now I'm going to change color. All right, I'm going to plot my critical point. Now, I know that since I'm graphing sine, that it starts at 0, 0. I also know that it crosses at the first, the second and fourth tick mark. Backwards, same thing. I know those points. Now, I also know that it starts low and goes high. I know this basic shape for the sign, and so I place those points. And I do it in reverse. Remember, 
this direction, I've got to continue. I've got high, middle. I've got to continue a smooth curve. No sharp points. All right, and now I can simply draw my line. So go a little bit beyond so I know you know what you're doing. Nice, smooth curves at the top and the bottom. And there we go. That is your sine curve. All right, now we're going to talk about a cosine curve. All right, we graph it. We put down four tick marks. So see, this is exactly the same as the sine function. We mark the furthest with our period. All right, middle is half, so half of two pi is pi. And on the negative side is negative pi. Half of that is pi over 2. And again, negative pi over 2. And then 3 times that is 3 pi over 2. All right, I mark my maximum. And I mark my minimum. All righty, now I'm going to plot my points. Well, this is cosine, so it starts up high and then drops and drops, middle, and then back up to this maximum. And I keep a nice smooth curve. I'm going to do the same thing behind it. There we go. Now, all I have to do is draw in my curve. A little extra so I know I can show my teacher I know what I'm doing. Nice round curve at the bottom, no sharp Vs. And I go a little beyond. There we go. Cosine. Two periods. Cosine. Okay. This is exactly what it looks like. Now remember this shape because this shape will continue no matter what else we do to this. All right. So now we're going to move on. Now your amplitude, which is what we're going to add in next, your amplitude is in standard form, your amplitude Sorry, is showing up right here. It's multiplying the entire function, the sine or the cosine. Your amplitude is always a positive number, so if we have a negative, it's going to rotate the graph, but the amplitude is the positive answer. So now notice that our range is from minus A to A, giving us a delta of 2A. All right, to graph the standard equation, you need to plot your five key points plot your min and max, and the 3x intercept. So we're going to do that now. All right, here's some pictures so you can see. The green line is y equals 2 sine x. It has an amplitude of 2. Notice it's going all the way down to negative 2 and up to 2. See, it's this big, tall one because its amplitude is 2. For A, A has an amplitude of 1, so it's only going half as far up and down as the one with 2 did. Alright, and finally, our blue has an amplitude of 1 half. So again, it's half the size of a regular one. So it's very, it's flattened out. Okay, so those are our three different types. So you can visualize what's going on. This is a sine curve. How do I know that? It's going through zero, zero. All right. All right, so now we have two sine fu a sine function and a cosine function we're going to graph. Again, remember I said you want to use color when you're graphing these. I do a different color for everything. So I'm going to mark my intercept. Well, I have a four sine, so my period is still two pi. So that's two pi, pi, pi over two, three pi over two. Negative two pi, negative pi, negative pi over two, and negative three pi over two. 
I set my min and my max. Now, my min and max are now 4. So my max is 4, and my min is negative 4. All right, so max is 4, min is negative 4. Now I'm going to mark my point. All right, for the sine function, it starts up high and drops. No, it doesn't start up high. That's cosine. I apologize. It starts at 0, 0. It starts at 0, 0, rotates up middle, down, back to middle. I need a smooth curve, so I've got my negative 4, 0, 4, 0. And now I draw my line. Okay, give it a little extra. Now I know I'm going, still going up there. And there we go. And a little extra. Okay, that's my y equals 4 sine x. All right, so now we're going to do the cosine. Again, I'm going to mark my period. Two pi, pi, pi over two, three pi over two. Negative two pi, negative pi. That didn't come out very well. There we go. Negative pi over two, negative three pi over two. My amplitude is now a two. So I go up 2 and I go down 2. So I mark that at 2 and this at negative 2. Alright, so now we're going to plot our point. Now remember this is cosine so it starts at the maximum. So it's up here, middle down, middle up. Keeping a nice curve, middle down, middle up. Alright, and now I'm going to draw in my graph. Give it a little bit of a curve so I know that I'm curving down from the beginning. And there we go. Two periods. Alright, now we're moving on to, we well, just did amplitude, we're going to move on to period. Okay, the period function, the period is what is multiplying the angle inside of my cosine and multiplying my x. So as you can see, it's this b. All right? And notice it's a full period divided by whatever that number is. Well, again, period's always positive, so we make b stay positive. So if I have something like Whoops, sorry, I didn't put my hand my little mat down. Y equals sine four X, my period is going to be two pi over four, which is pi over two. Okay? Now, so now we scale our Tick marks. There we go. Oh, here's your different periods visually. Okay. Uh, standard cosine x is the purple. All right. Cosine four x is the blue. Nope. Pardon me. Cosine 4x is the green. Okay? So it repeats itself four times within the standard 2 pi. Okay? So the new period is pi over 2. So you get a lot more ups and downs. Whereas cosine 1 fourth x, much smaller, you don't even get a full period in this total of 4 pi length. Okay, because it's stretched way out. Alright. Okay, so now we're going to do y equals cosine 4x. 
Okay, so our min and max are still 1. All right, plus or minus 1. But now, if our period changes. Since I've got a 4, it's 2 pi over 4, which is pi over 2. So I go out here and I mark my furthest tick mark, whoops, not with 4, with the given period. So about that? Pi over 2. Alright, half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Half of that is pi over 8. Multiply that by 3. See, if you keep to that pattern, this is actually pretty easy. Now we do the negative. Negative pi over 2. Negative pi over 4. Negative pi over 8. Negative 3 pi over 8. Okay, min and max are still 1. Negative 1. Alright, and now we're going to plot our points. Alright, remember this is a cosine, so it starts up high and sinks. You have to remember this pattern. It's the only way you're going to learn how to do this. Okay. And I'm done. Now I just have to draw my line with my highlighter. Remember, a little extra space. So my teacher knows I know what I'm doing. And I come back down. There we go. Cosine 4x. All right, let's look at the sine of 3x. All right, my minimum and maximum are again plus or minus 1. My period now is 2 pi over 3. That makes it a little more awkward, 2 pi over 3. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the negative 2 pi over 3. Now when I go to get half of this, the way to think about this is I've got 2 pi over 3, and I want half of it, so I multiply. Well, the 2's cross out. So pi over 3 is my half tick mark. Now I need half of this. So again, I multiply by 1 half and I get pi over 6. So that's pi over 6. Now I need 3 times that. Well, 3 times pi over 6, the 3 crosses out leaving a 2, is pi over 2. So this becomes pi over 2. Alright, now I mark my mins and maxes. I have 1 and negative 1. Okay. Plot my points. This is a sign, so I start at 0, 0 and go up. Keeping my nice curve, I still fall. And there we go. And now I'm going to sketch in my graph. And there we have a sine curve. This is the sine of 3x. Pi over, whoa, sorry. All right, now we're on to our final section. We're going to talk about how we put this all together. So, a lot of this is just how I'm marking my tick mark. <coughs> Sorry, that's not too bad. Notice my period, this is, sorry, amplitude is going to change. So, my amplitude is one-third. So, that means... I'm going to mark this as one-third, and this as negative one-third. My period changes by two, so my period is two pi over two, which is pi. You're going to have to show me these values every time. Every graph is going to have to show me amplitude, period. And then later on when we get into shifts, you're going to have to show me the shift. You're going to have to show me asymptotes on some of them that will have asymptotes. So you've got to figure out all these values. All right, with my period being pi, that makes this not too difficult. 
and 3 pi over 4. I do the negative. No, sorry, it's no 3. Negative pi over 4. This is the negative 3 pi over 4. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to change my color. Again, that's what I keep telling you. You're going to want lots of color with this. Okay, so, cosine start at set its maximum. It's going to start up here, go down, down, up, up. And then keeping a nice smooth curve. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to draw in my graph a little bit. That's kind of a weird little extra bit I did on that one, but that's okay. As long as it's obvious what I meant. Okay, so there I've done both an amplitude and a period change. Alright, we're going to do a sine and a cosine here. Alright, amplitude is one fourth, period is two pi over pi. So my period is just 2. So I've got here mark 2. Half of that is 1. Half of that is 1 half. 3 times that is 3 halves. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 3 halves. I've marked my maximum at 1 fourth and my minimum at negative 1 fourth. I plot my point. This is a sine function, so it starts at 0, 0, up, middle, down, middle. Keeping a nice small low curve here. And there I go. Drawing my line. And there we have it. Alright, now for the cosine. We've got to practice this a lot. All right, so my amplitude is, oh dear, look, I've got, now got a negative. So my amplitude is negative 2, which means I'm going to be down at negative 2 here to start. Instead of starting at 0, oh, well, I'll start at, no, it is cosine. So instead of starting at 1, I start at negative 2. So it kind of is rotating it. It's flipping it around the y ax, the x-axis, sorry. All right, my period is 2 pi over pi over 2. Invert and multiply, I end up with 4. Now I have a period of 4, so I come out here and I mark 4, 2, 1, and 3. Well, that's easy. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. All right, now here's where it gets a little tricky because of that negative sitting out front. Instead of going from 0, nope, this is cosine. Uh, instead of going, starting at 2, I start down at negative 2 because of this negative here. All right, and I, but I still maintain my shape. I've just rotated it around the uh, x-axis. Two and up and down and down. There we go. So now we draw our line. A little bit of a curve because that's a cosine and I need to know what I'm doing. Oops. And there we go. Alright, so that is my cosine with a amplitude and period change. And we're done. Thank you.